Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at Anyrun's Threat Intelligence Service. This video is sponsored by Anyrun, and what we're going to be doing is looking at the top malware, especially Linux malware, because one of the biggest comments I get is, well, what about Linux malware? We, we often look at uh, Windows malware, and I, I once made a video about a piece of Linux malware, but it is profoundly uncommon, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We're going to look and see how does it compare? How does Windows malware compare to Linux malware? So let's take a look. So we can put in a variety of things. So we can put in, for example, because the Anyrun sandbox has this version of Ubuntu. So if we put this in, we'll be getting Ubuntu malware, which is what we're interested in here. Now, there are different plans available, and we can uh, later we can get more queries if we need them. Uh, so we can go down and we can see, all right, so we've got a bunch of different ones. You can also see our recent requests. I was looking at this, and I was also uh, tracking down Hexon Stealer a while ago on this platform. So we've got some shell scripts. We can get an idea of what indicators of compromise there are, and some innocent things. And one of the files we found here, here looks to be, uh, they're calling this an XOR bot. And let's see what this one does. Now you can immediately see that it is sending curl requests off to here and we can see each line we've got the dash shell then it's uh, changing the ownership and we've detected a couple of things here we've got botnet xor bot which is a specific botnet and this package seems to primarily be downloading from external servers pieces of malware to keep going so that's one piece of uh, Linux malware. Now let's look at what else we've got. So we've got an exploit and a loader. We'll take a look at this one. Now this one is sending a massive amount of activity. So the file runs with pseudo permissions, which isn't a great idea. Checks the locale, files, downloads files from a server. And then it downloads an executable file that anyone is tagging. Is this actually a P? No, it is actually... It just has a PE by default. Now we can look at, see what Virus Total has to say about this. And wow, this is quite a nasty piece of work. It's a Mirai dropper. Now Mirai is the most common Linux malware. It's a botnet. And as we saw with the other botnet, uh, we're starting to see a bit of a trend here in terms of what Linux malware looks like. Now we can also, of course, we can download this sample. Now, of course, and I'm doing this on a Windows VM, so it's not going to immediately execute. Always take maximum precautions whenever you download anything from a malware analysis site. The password is always going to be, actually, we have to use 7-zip for whatever reason, but the password's always going to be infected. And I would always recommend never do this on your main system. You can do this on a VM. Don't do this on the main system. Now, I'm just kind of curious what the underlying file here looks like attack why do we what do we have symbols yeah no no we, we definitely uh have symbols <laughs> okay that's interesting so that's the other thing about linux malware is while the tools to analyze it are less developed the obfuscation is also a lot less developed uh, that is truly uh hilarious okay we got everything we need here uh, so we've got a decryptor function which is nicely named Destroy this, add this, Google DNS in here, check through the hosts file here. We've got another Mirai in a botnet. Now, now let's see if we can find any Linux stealers. Now here's more the kind of malware that you're used to. This one has an impressive list of uh, malicious functionality hitting a bunch of, so let's, we can watch the replay and see how this worked. Now the big thing you're probably starting to notice is Linux malware is very different from Windows malware in that it's not usually targeting a desktop user. It's not going to have a campaign like an email attachment or a like a fake Fortnite swapper. Those do very rarely exist, but because very few people use Linux as their primary desktop operating system, it's much easier to target servers. So the way this kind of malware will often get into your system is you will either have a Linux server that has bad security settings, or a piece of software will have a vulnerability that they scan for or use a service like Shodan to find, and then they will be able to take over. 
Now, this has a lot of interesting things. It does have an info stealer, so if there's a, if there's credentials to steal, but then it goes right to work mining crypto, uh, joins a botnet, and it scans so that it can potentially find other vulnerable servers to take over. Also sets up a Tor node, which is a surprisingly common tactic. It's sort of a backdoor method. So here we've got this uh, red tail process doesn't look legit. Now here's another one. Uh, this one is from the summer. Now as we can see, there's not a huge quantity of Linux stealers, and that's for a number of reasons. Mainly just the, the low desktop uh, usage here. Now let's try botnet, which seems to be a lot more common. And of course the big dominant one on Linux is going to be a malware called Mirai. Now here's another big hitter. So we've got a download of x86.elf, which is the process that seems to start, and then it goes through, and it ultimately gets deleted. And that's another stealthing technique. Now let's see if we can download this binary and get an idea of what it does. Now as you can see, I'll show you the replay, there's nothing that visibly happens, which is very common with this kind of malware, and of course, on the system that this is targeting, there wouldn't even be a graphical user interface. The only way you might be able to detect this is if you went through the processes command, but as you can see by a lot of these file names, they make that more difficult by choosing a file name that you're not likely to see as malicious. We can actually go, because you can always, on any run, you can always rerun uh, if you see something you're interested in. And I'm going to put the fake net on, because I want to see if it's doing anything really interesting on the network. Then we can open up HTOP and we can see what would we see if we were the victim. Oh, we've instantly gotten a hotspot. That looks fake. And we can open up. Might actually be from the fake net. Okay, we'll have to use top then because we don't have HTOP. We don't even see it. But it is clearly running. Now we can see anything that might look like uh, port scanning. Trying to connect to a command and control server, but it won't be able to if we're on fake net. It's an interesting command and control server name. We don't even see it. Let's take a look at this file, and the same warning I gave before about how you should always be really careful when you download anything from a sample site, because it is of course malicious, we'll apply, but we'll go over this. Looks like these guys were at least smart enough not to give us symbols, don't see the command and control domain in here, I think this is going to be main. Yeah, and then we got some sort of uh, obfuscated setup here, let's see what this is being, see what that's being used. Yeah, so the obfuscation here looks like there's just a knotting going on here. Okay, so we dereference that. We, that's a weird... And we got some sort of socket operation. And if we Google this random string, uh, we can see this is actually a signature. So that makes sense. So this is another Mirai botnet. So why is pretty much everything here a botnet? Well, because... Linux is mostly used for servers, so this kind of malware will try to get in through a vulnerability, hence why it port scans, take over the Linux server. It's a bit like the one in the Windows XP video, but a bit sneakier. So how do you prevent it? Well, the main thing is you just watch out, make sure you don't have a weak root password on your system. Preferably, if you're going to use SSH, you purely use a trusted key rather than using password authentication. Never use Telnet, which is the unencrypted version. That's the other potential problem. And just use common sense. Initially, Mirai mostly targeted Internet of Things devices that would sometimes expose themselves to the internet with terrible security. Now that trend has died down a bit, but there's still a lot of bad uh, devices. So to finish this off, I just wanted to go through, if you're interested in this, where you can get these great products. Here are the options. So depending on how many credits you need, what you need to integrate, uh, you can contact sales and they'll help you out. You can get threat intelligence feeds, which gives you real time, and you can get the sandbox built into your threat intelligence plan. This is a really great service, and it, I'm going to be making quite a bit of use of this. It's really great to be able to find whatever samples you want, whether you're interested in Linux malware, 
you want Luma, you want something specific, you see something new trending, you can write a custom Yera rule for it, you can get a real-time overview of complex threats and evolving threat landscape that you may not be able to catch with automated defenses. To check this out, please do click the link in the description and you can get up to 50 requests for free to evaluate the service. Thank you so much to Anyrun uh, for sponsoring this video. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe uh, for more great cybersecurity content. That's all from me for now. Bye.